gentlemen, today we need to talk about multicultural literature, the importance of reading things written by people whose lives are different from your own. That's what this lesson's going to be about, and I appreciate you guys volunteering to be filmed. Um, multicultural literature is simply that. It's simply literature written by people from different cultures, different backgrounds, maybe different ethnicities, different national origins. Uh, when I was growing up, I didn't know there was such a thing as multicultural literature. I had read a lot of books by white guys. So I wanted to talk to you about multicultural literature. If you see right here on the home page of this site, could you go where it says, tell me in this form why it may be a good idea to learn how other people live. If you click on that, it'll take you to a Mentimeter page, and you can tell me in your own words why you think it might be a great thing to learn how other people live. Why is it important to you? Why do you think? then you can go back in the tabs to the page that we were on. You can actually see the answers populated onto that page. Because it shows us different points of views and many different people, it helps us understand other people's situations. It's good. I like it. It's a good idea to see how other people live so we can understand other people's lifestyle. Oh, more. Okay. It's important to know how other people live so you can better understand your own way of living and better appreciate where you come from. To get a better understanding of other people's lives, the things around you, as well as how others react to different things. It's important to know that not everyone is the same as you. People have different religions and values. It's important to understand that. You guys are giving me the perfect answers here. Unprompted. This is just what you thought. Okay. Didn't even prep you on that. You guys really do kind of have a natural understanding of why multicultural literature is important. And I do appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to go to the next little tab there. So if you look at my page, there's a little navigation over on the left-hand side. So if you actually go back over, here's the voting tab, go back to the regular website that I made. If you go to the little tab on uh, the, the navigation on the left, you can click thinking about it. If you click thinking about it for me, that'd be great. Uh, pick a partner or work in a group of three. Group of three, one partnership, one group of three over here. Look at your partner. Look at your face. There you go. <laughs> partner or group of three. Um, you got one of these questions. You're going to pick a member of your group to respond for the class. So I'm actually going to have three responses. So I'm going to have a partnership and a group of three over here. I'm going to have a group of three over here. Uh, you can talk about the time when you were at home. When you impress someone by exceeding their expectations of you. Someone ever look at you and think, oh, that kid's not capable of much, and then you just knock their socks off. Uh, talk about a time when you felt you were treated unfairly. Or you can talk about a time when you were frustrated by the way things were and you wanted to change the world. So, talk with your group. I'm going to put a few moments here. I'm going to give us about two minutes. Set a timer for two minutes. Thank you. 
One minute left, and I'm going to start bothering people. The second one is an award-winning book that I recently completed reading. I like that a lot. The third one is, oh yeah, a historical novel that tells about a race riot. And the fourth one is the cutest book ever about a little kid going to school. So I actually want to do something called a book talk. And I got to do three book talks. And then I have to do a read aloud. And I promised you that during the read aloud, I was going to try very calmly to do the thing I needed to do, but I do have to curse. There's a swear word in my read aloud. I apologize in advance. It makes me just sad to do it, but it's important to read it as it is written. So, I want to tell you about these four books. Uh, Flying Lessons and Other Stories is a book where they have 10 different short stories. But actually, it's in our library here. It's available for download, and I think you should pick it up if you're thinking about it, because short stories go by real quick. Uh, there's 10 stories, though. Uh, the first one, How to Transform an, every, sorry, how to transform an Ordinary 
how to transform an everyday ordinary moot court into a place of higher learning and you as a podium. This is a boy who's in school who decides he's going to go and uh, look at him. He's going to go play basketball. Uh, he's going to go play basketball with adult men at the municipal gym to learn how to play basketball. And uh, as he does this, he learns how to respect people, he learns kindness, he learns how to treat people. The second one is about a girl in China, a young girl in China who was sold to a family. She was sold to a family, and the mother who sold her, who needed to sell her child, couldn't get by, couldn't feed her kid, sold her kid to this family on the condition that her kid be taught how to read. But the kid was being sold to the family to be a servant, and then perhaps to marry the son later. So she gets out of it somehow or another, right? I'm not going to tell you how, but it's a really interesting ending, uh, but selling children. The, the third story is actually, interestingly, called Soul Painting. And it actually stars the girl who this book is about. Mercy Suarez, her dad is a painter, and uh, she's going to public school, and she's about to get into a private school on a scholarship, and her dad has to paint the gym of the private school as part of the scholarship agreement. So it's a little awkward because she realizes that her dad, when he's working in this kind of servant role where he's painting for these rich people, that he's kind of invisible to them. And it upsets her, right? Uh, so that's a good story. I like that a lot. The next one's called Secret Samantha. It's a secret Santa at a school. And the girl draws, they have elf things. It's very cute. It's sparkles and sprinkles and things like that. And the new girl who just moved there from out of state, she picks the name Blade. And the girl who draws a blade has to buy blade a present. It's really cool. Uh, the Rice and Beans Chronicles of Isaiah Dunn. It's a little boy, uh, I think he's actually a teenage boy. It was his dad's house. His dad's passed away. And his mom is having trouble dealing with it, so she drinks a lot. They lose their apartment. But this kid finds his dad's writing. And his dad's writing made it into a comic book hero. This kid, Isaiah Dunn, finds his dad has turned him into a comic book hero before his death. So he's reading the Rice and Beans Chronicles that his dad's read about. And uh, rice and beans make him superpowers. Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. There's a Choctaw story about an uncle. Everybody have an uncle who tells crazy stories? This is the uncle in the Choctaw community who tells the crazy stories about Bigfoot. Uh, and then there's one where a boy gets into a car street, a car, car wreck rather, and he learns how to read minds. There's one where uh, a very white town gets its first looking person. It's an African-American girl, and the white girl makes friends with her first racially diverse friend. It's kind of cool. Um, an Indian boy who goes on a vacation with his grandmother to Spain. And she wants him to have more fun, and he won't have fun. He doesn't know how. Uh, and a kid who was going to be a basketball star, but then loses the ability to use his legs. And his dad is a basketball star. So his dad helps him do the wheelchair basketball. So all those stories are amazing. They're all people who are differently, certainly a different culture from what I am. So I was interested to read them all. Uh, my second book on this list, Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. This is a super cute book. She was the girl from Salt Painting. She wound up going to her private school. And she wound up kind of being uh, an athletic type. She wound up being into sports, into uh, playing soccer. She actually played with her dad's soccer team that her dad plays on with adult men. And she kind of crushed. She wanted to join the school soccer team, but she couldn't because her mom needed her at home. She had to help take care of the little kids in the family. Her grandfather was starting to get sick. And a lot of stuff's happening. Her life changes a lot in this book. But I like that character. She's tough. Uh, my third book, A Few Red Drops. This is historical. This is not a character. This is actually a story about race riots in Chicago. Uh, it's a whole century ago, 1919. Um, in the post-slavery South, a lot of people who of color didn't have jobs that were any good, they didn't have money, they didn't have opportunity. Chicago was a place where um, meatpacking was happening. Animals slaughtered, meatpacking, you know, food, food industry production. And uh, a lot of jobs were there. So a lot of people, a lot of former slaves from the South moved north to Chicago, and it filled up the city. And there were a lot of European immigrants, and there were a lot of former slaves and they couldn't figure out how to share the space, and tensions got worse, and the jobs got more scarce, and all of a sudden, in 1919, it came to a head of a race for us. So those were three books that I thought were pretty amazing. I like the short stories. I like the story about the little girl who rides her bike to school, even though uh, it's kind of a <laughs> kind of a tough little bike. Um, but yeah, she rides her bike to her little private school, and she's got all the stuff going on at home. And I did like this one a lot. It was not as much character invested. 
Uh, but the last one I was going to do, a read aloud from. So I have to read you a chunk from this book. Uh, this is the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian. It is a kid who grows up on an Indian reservation. I know that it is called Native American, but he calls it Indian because everyone he knows calls it Indian. And he's just decided he's going to go to the fancy white kid's school. He's going to be the only one there. His best friend punched him in the eye on the way out of town. I'm going to miss you. You suck. You're leaving me. Punched him in the eye. Right? Some friend. So I have to do this read aloud, and I thought I would read it to you, and it's kind of a cute story. It's written in this boy's voice, and his boy, this boy's name is Junior. It's called How to Fight Monsters. The next morning, Dad drove me 22 miles to rear it. I'm scared, I said. I'm scared too, Dad said. You don't have to do this, he said. You can always go back to the res school. You know, I said, I have to do this. Can you imagine what would happen to me if I turned around and gone back to the res school? <laughs> I would have been pummeled, mutilated, crucified. You can't just betray your tribe, then, you know, change your mind ten minutes later. I was on a one-way bridge. There was no way to turn around, even if I wanted to. Just remember this, my father said. Those white people are better than me. But he was so wrong. And he knew he was wrong. He was a loser Indian father, a loser Indian son, living in a world built for the winners. But he loved me so much. He hugged me even closer. This is a great thing, he said. You're so brave. You're a warrior. It was the best thing he could have said. Here's some lunch money, he said, and handed me a dollar. We were poor enough to get free lunch, but I didn't want to be the only Indian and a sad sack in need of charity. Thanks, Dad, I said. I love you, he said. I love you, too. I felt stronger, so I stepped out of the car and walked to the front door. It was locked. So I stood alone on the sidewalk and watched my father drive away. I hope he'd drive right home instead of not stop at the bar and spend whatever money he had left. I hope you'd remember to come back and pick me up after school. I stood alone at the front door for a few long minutes. It was still early and I had a black eye from Rowdy's goodbye punch. Now I had a purple, blue, and yellow black eye. It looked like modern art. Then the white kids began arriving for school. They surrounded me. Those kids weren't just white, they were translucent. I could see blue veins running through their skin like rivers. Most of the kids were my size or smaller. I'm oh, sorry, most of the kids were my size or smaller, but there were 10 or 12 monster dudes giant white guys. They looked like men, not boys. They had to be seniors. Some of them looked like they had to shave two or three times a day. They stared at me, the Indian boy with the black eye and the swollen nose. My going away gets from Randy. Those white kids couldn't believe their eyes. They stared at me like I was Bigfoot or a UFO. What was I doing up here? It was mascot with an Indian, thereby making me the only other Indian in town. So what was I doing? A racist career where more than half of every graduating class went to college. Nobody in my family had ever gone near to college. Reardon was the opposite of the res. It was the opposite of my family. It was the opposite of me. I didn't deserve to be there. I knew it. All those kids knew it. And he was don't deserve shit. That is my favorite passage from the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian. And it's got a lot of pictures in it. I actually don't have one, but his pictures of what he's like and what the other kids are like. I should have put it up here. Uh, but those are four books that I think are kind of great. What I'm going to do right now, I've got just a little bit here. The next tab is called Shopping for a Book here. And I may need to truncate this a little bit, but start to think about the stories that you like reading. There's a list of multicultural fiction right here. If you want to take a look, if you're interested in multicultural fiction, I've got lists and lists. I've got another list of teen, multicultural teen fiction right here. If you want to take a gander at any of this stuff, that's actually the book I was just reading. <laughs> I've got uh, 30 multi multicultural books every teen should know. I've got three different lists for you to check out if you're interested. And then the next piece I have here is finding out if you can get these things for free. Since I am in school to do library stuff, I thought I would give you links to our library. The Dallas ISD library catalog is right here. If you wanted to find a book, you could type it in right there and you can see if we have it. I'm just going to start with the absolutely true diary. Look at that. The book I was just reading in, right there. Let's see if we've got it. Oh, this is the ebook and I have it up. I'll turn it back in. <laughs> you can see if the books you want are there. Back to the results. There it is. Available. 
summary. Very good. Tell us y'all about it. The other thing I wanted to show you guys was Sora, the electronic book app. That's what I was using a lot of uh, in my, uh, my reading of these four books. Sora right here is a very, very easy to use app. And you can get it with your school ID number. And you can read books off your phone. That's a really good handy thing to do if you don't feel like you can carry around extra stuff that you wanted to read something. So this right here is how you can set it up. It's free download. Dallas, Texas is the setup code. And then your student ID and the last four digits of your student ID are how you download books. The Sora is really handy. I got it on here, actually. This is what I'm reading right now. The bookshelf. This is how I can look for stuff. Flying lessons. There you go. So Sora is something you can open on a computer or you can open it on your phone. I like it a lot. You can get books for free from your house. You don't have to put on, you can be in your pajamas and you can get a book. Okay? You can be out of the country as long as you're connected and get a book. So that is a neat thing to have. If you want to download that today, that would be a really neat thing for you to get. Um, I've got just a few more things. kind of rushing through a little bit, but can you all go to the tab that's called, what's it called? A large number of these multicultural books that I'm reading and multicultural books that I'm showing you are autobiographical. That one I just showed you, autobiographical, it's this boy's story of his own entry into this school, right? So if you were going to write a story about your life so far, Think about the heroes, the villains, the people who lifted you up, the people who stood in your way. What would be the title of your autobiography? Go ahead and click on it where it says, tell the group here. Tell me the title of your autobiography. If you wrote your own life story, what would you call it? Is that a time of two minutes? Every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. First in the family. That opens a lot of doors right there. Don't ever expect too much. The carpet keeps slipping out from under me. has some interesting autobiographical titles. If you already know what the name of your autobiography would be, what I'm going to have you guys do, wait for a few more to come in, I'm stalling, wait for just a few more to come in. Uh, the thing I want you guys to do once you know what your autobiography would be called, is go to this tab that says make it happen. This is what I want you to try out today. It's always said that you should never judge a book by its cover, but honestly, people do it all the time, right? That's why your life story needs a really great cover. So you're going to make a cover for your book here and show the class. And if you want, you can print it and take it home. This right here is a free thing called Canva. You click on it. That was my one minute timer. I'm going to go back to that in just a second. You can start designing your book cover. So go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and decide what your life story book cover is going to look like. What kind of picture do you want? What do you want to put the title of? Is it plain? Is it decorative? Is it a picture of it? Just a cool font. Work on your book covers. I'm going to go back to this tab and see where we are with our collection color. Some other ideas for your autobiography, right or wrong. I want it, I got it. The ups and downs of an antisocial team. 
Don't judge a book by its cover. Thank you. <laughs> oh, comedy. I love it. I love it. Got all of you responding. So if you want to work on that just a little bit, make yourself a book cover in Canva. Maybe use some of the tools in there, make some of the pictures in there. It's kind of neat. Is it making you log in? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was going to make you log in because I guess I was logged in already. But Canva's a really neat thing and you can make book covers with it. And you can also do other projects for other classes with it. And I apologize, I didn't realize it was going to make you do the Google login. My bad. Did you guys just pick the same one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let this be your assignment for a while here. Okay, we're right in the middle of this, making it happen. I know I'm supposed to teach a 30 minute lesson. Um, we're almost hitting that mark here, but I'm going to give you a few minutes to play with this. That's going to go over a little, and I apologize. How much time do you guys think you want to use this? Three to five minutes? I'll do a three minute timer and then I'll come back to the close up. Set a timer for three minutes. And honestly, if you don't finish it in three minutes, please come back to it and play with it. But I am going to go ahead and do my final thought three minutes from now just for the sake of wrapping it up. No, no, you can keep playing with it. It's fine. Back to it in just a minute. I think you guys are making some 
really cool stuff. I'm sorry I didn't feel rushed. I love that. It's great. But if you wouldn't mind going back to the tab momentarily where my page is, because I kind of need to wrap it all up so we can stop doing uh, this video recording in a lesson and you can keep on doing what you need to get your book cover finished. Uh, where it says a final thought on the very left-hand side of the page. It's the point of reading about different cultures. You all said in the beginning, you get different perspectives to understand different people's lives, to see how they live, right? Do you think you prefer to read books from your own culture, or would you prefer to read about people from different cultures? Your own culture? Other cultures? Other? Other? My favorite class. Your own culture? Other cultures? Yeah? Your own culture? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, this is happening. Is something can you open it in a different browser? I'm sorry. Um, just like finding. Um, my favorite, favorite class in college, the major in literature, was my African American literature class. The whole time I was in high school, I don't think I read books that were by anyone who was any different than my culture. When I got to that African American literature class, it was absolutely mind blowing to me because I had never read about these experiences and these lives and you know, people in post slavery South living the lives that they lived just was unimaginable to me until I read their stories and their own words. It's really bizarre. <laughs> it's like, I've grown up very sheltered, very sheltered. So, last thought for this. Tell me in this here form, see where it says tell me in this form right there? Go ahead and click on that. What makes an interesting story to you personally? What makes a story interesting? If you're reading a book, why is that book good? What makes an interesting story to you? This will be our closing piece, and then if you want, you can finish up your book covers. What makes a story interesting to you personally? Let's see if I can pull this full screen. follow but with some comical but serious thoughts. I like that. I like a book that has a lot of honestness to it that is very funny in parts. Um, many plot changes, good or bad. Okay. People going through a struggle but finding ways to overcome the issue. So you do like these kinds of stories. You like the kinds of stories where there are struggles to overcome. You like a lot of change. You like emotions. You like truth, truth that comes with it. I'm going to wait for a few more of these to come in, and then we're going to wrap it up, and then we're going to maybe work on those book covers a little. Personally, the most interesting story that appeals to me is one that I can relate to and has a real life meaning. A story with adventures, challenges, and dead ends. Interesting. <laughs> answers. I'm going to wait for a few more and then I think we're going to wrap. The story is interesting if it fits my own interests and makes me think beyond anything I put my mind to. I like facts, learning new things, relatable topics. So guys, now that you are thinking about stories, thinking about your own life story, thinking about books, thinking about different cultures and the books that they have in different cultures, and you're thinking what makes stories interesting to you. Ah, a story with action and adventure. Yes. 
You can go back to shopping for a book. You can download things on your phone. You can go to the library at the school and get things that you can borrow for free. Uh, and you can look at these multicultural book lists and decide if there's something on there that might be intriguing to you as well. Let me get back to my last few final thoughts here. Uh, story is interesting. Oh, I already said that one. Sorry. Uh, a story with action and adventure. I think I've got everybody. Now I've got one more left. Oh, it's doing weird stuff. Oh, I didn't notice that. Here we go. To me, it's when the character has character development. <laughs> and one where I can relate to the character. Relatability. All right, so guys, uh, that is all I need to tell you today about multicultural literature. I see a lot of you have gone back to looking at your book covers, and I love that. And when you finish them, I'd love to see them. If you want to print them, I'll help you print them. Any questions you guys have about multicultural literature right now? Okay. Well, I appreciate your attention. I know this wasn't your regular assignment, so this is very fun. Okay, I'm going to go shut up again.